presentation on WINT. The views and opinions presented on this program do not necessarily coincide with those of our ownership, management, or staff. I'm Sanjay Parker, and I'm learning how to use a microphone. Uh, this is Tech Talk 2020, and we're here with my awesome co-host who knows how to use a microphone because his name is Mike Rowe, phone car as well. That's it, baby. And we're here to talk to you about all kinds of cool things related to your health, your business, your life, because technology is life in a lot of ways. Today, Welcome, everybody, to Tech Talk 2020. We're so glad that you're here with us this evening. I know how to use a microphone, but not the computer. Here on WINT <laughs> 1330 AM and the new 101.5 FM WINT Integrity Radio. Glad you're here. You can also catch us, WINTradio.com. You can also get us on TuneIn Radio. And then during the show, if you feel so so led, tweet at us at Tech Talk 2020 on our Twitter handle or hit us up on Facebook, which is also Tech Talk 2020. And we're going to get smarter together. Yes. That's awesome. And I got very smarter <laughs> much, uh, something like that, not in that order. But I got smarter reading uh, a media report that a company called Activate Tech put out. It's their media and tech outlook uh, for 2018. just came out yesterday. I was reading it. It was fascinating. There's so many great things that are happening uh, that they just nailed in terms of the evolution of technology and media and change over the next five years. Um, I know, Mike, you're pretty excited about the media in general and <laughs> technology in general. These are your two favorite topics. <laughs> don't 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 imp imply that I don't enjoy learning about technology. We got rid of the rotary phone last week. We're doing good. And what do you have now? Huh, so what's that? What do you have now? We, we've got a one that goes boop, 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 boop when you dial. Oh, nice. It's pretty cool. That's very cool. Up. Okay, yeah. I'm fibbing. Do you know I'm what fibbing. the opposite of a smartphone is? Uh, dumb phone. No. What is it? Feature phone. Ooh. Feature phone. Not future. Uh, feature phone. Check that out. No, we're not quite that technology savvy. I think something's going on where somebody hit the like button on our Facebook page. I think we're doing it ourselves. And there's just likes and loves going all across there, the endless emojis. Do we, <laughs> I, do I we have you any shout outs to anybody? No. I don't know. Anybody, anybody want to be shouted out at? Or? Larry oh. Manici. Larry, and, what's going down? Glad and you're here. his awesome superstar son, Anthony Manici, if you're listening, hello, and your mom, Megan, and your cat, Gigi, and I can't remember your doggy's name, goodness gracious, but he's always looking at me from from afar, wanting to jump on me, I think. Good, That's right, ladies and gentlemen, here, your cats even get shout-outs. That's right. That's right. Roll and rock. Gigi from the future. Now, so a Roll couple of things. Rock. This report, so check this out, is the Activate uh, Tech and Media Outlook 2018. We'll post it on our Facebook page. Activate. Tech, what is it again? Tech and Media Outlook okay. 2018. Gotcha. I mean, that's basically, uh, it's great. Instead of watching a movie Friday night, read this. It's about 145 pages. Fantastic. I'm going to distill it into just a, a few big topics. One of them is there are, uh, basically, they talk about $300 billion in tech and media growth over the next five years. Is that billion with a B, Sanjay? Billion. And that's growth. I mean, we're talking trillion-dollar markets. For example, you know, Two trillion dollars uh, in terms of um, subscription models, you oh, know, so Netflix and Hulu, all that stuff. Not billions, now we're talking trillions. With right. Wow. And it's interesting. The thing that will lead the compound annual growth rate of um, technology and media uh, revenue over the next five years is going to be actually um, the cost of internet access. So don't think you're getting away scot-free with your 29.95 internet plan that's actually going to go up that's going to see most of the cost why? increase why because it's there and and you cord cutters including myself decided you know we're going to get content over the internet now that pipe is going to be more important than the cable connection that we used to have to get the content gotcha it's a pipe we got some great stats on where people are getting their information and news as well which you'll find interesting well i want to quickly ask you this about just I wonder, and I know it's, it's minimized significantly from what it used to be, but I wonder how many folks out there suffer from buffering. The buffering Are you cause. suffering from buffering? buffering. Hmm. You know, so we've gotten so accustomed to utilizing the Internet for so many different services and sources that it's really annoying to see that little circle thing spinning around on your screen now. 
Is that a common thing at, at Parker 101 uh, Parker Street? Yeah, it used to be until I What'd you do? Up- What'd you do? upgraded. It was great. So it cost you more money? Um, at first, but then I downgraded and I got more for less. <laughs> it was weird. You have to play the game with the the people. I got somebody nice on the line and Yeah. They gave me a deal. I said my neighbor's got this deal for 29.95 and That's my I phone. said so Mike has no um, He's part of the I Don't Mute Anything Society. <laughs> it's very hard to get him to mute anything. Sometimes he's talking at the end of the show. Um, so here's something interesting that yes. came out of this. I think I know who that was. How then. many hours are there in a day? Well, last check, it was 24. Wrong. Oh, no. According to Activate. So 25? There are 31 hours a day. Who's Activate? This and when did they become the authority? They are because, listen, their analysis shows that because of multitasking. Okay. Multitasking. Or multi-slacking if you're at work <laughs> and you're kind of doing social stuff. Yep. Because of multitasking, we as Americans have actually put in the ability to consume content and do things that equal up to 31 hours a day. So that measurement of, hey, you only have 24 hours a day, no longer true. We're multitasking. For example, yes, sir. how many hours do you think the average U.S. person sleeps per night? Well, I'm going to say between five and a half and six and a half. Okay, seven hours and six minutes. All right, because I get five and a half and six and a half, but I'm at average. Right. Now, how many hours do you think people are, (laughs) this is a good one, actually working? (laughs) Five and a half, six and a half, yeah. Five hours and 13 (laughs) minutes. Interesting. Seven hours of sleep, five hours of work, other non-work activities, including cooking, housework, personal household care, leisure, fitness, eating and drinking. Roughly seven hours. I was going to say roughly seven seconds in my house. With the <laughs> way down. the chores get chores get done around my place. Not with my wife, though. I mean, trust me. I'm just kind of cutting on the kids right now. What are we talking about? Go on, move on. Okay. So seven hours of sleep, seven hours of leisure activities, including wife time, five hours of work. How many hours of watching video? Boy. Um, the average I, U.S. Well, I know person. that amongst the youngsters, it's around four hours a day. With Very the close. youngsters, but I don't know about the older folks. Older folks, but well, this is eighteen. This is a behavior average over seven days, and it includes um, U.S. adults eighteen and over in mm-hmm. two thousand and sixteen. So pretty recent stuff. Yep. Five hours and five minutes a day oh, of that's video. Disgusting. That's disgusting. Two hours of audio. Two hours and nine minutes. So watch five hours of video. Two hours of just audio, probably in our car, trans um, mm-hmm. or commuting. One hour of games. One hour of um, active social sharing and, and doing all that stuff, and two hours and twenty-seven minutes of just random surfing. What about eating? Is eating is within the six hours and fifty-five minutes. Okay, I got you. Okay. So five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven—almost twelve hours a day is spent with video and computers and social. What about what about um, reading? Is it on there? Reading a book. Remember those things? Yeah, only on the computer. That's your two <laughs> hours and 27 minutes. Isn't that crazy? It's uh, it's very interesting. That I, is crazy. Some would say it's sad. That adds up to 31. Well, we're squeezing a lot more out of the day buddy, some, some than our predecessors. I mean, 25 years ago, they had seven hours less, which, you know, frankly, is about a 25% drop-off in productivity from 31 hours. So we're getting more done today, you're saying? Uh, no, we're doing time. more today. I don't know if we're getting more done. <laughs> right. So... A typical 12-hour and four-minute media day. Okay. Okay? You, it's, it's crazy. I, we got to share this thing. I mean, so I'm much sorry. video, so <laughs> little audio, lots of, of social media and gaming. It's crazy. We're right, going to skip right. through that. Right. All so right. do you still play any games, video games? Uh, only with my kids. And you know what we've been doing lately? No, tell me. Family Feud. Family Feud, that's why love I love that. Love Family that. Feud. We just brought the Wii up from the basement, my 11 year old Wii. Yeah. Because it has family games, right? Not yeah. the kill your whole neighborhood <laughs> with this new gun <laughs> thing. You can actually play things. It's good for hand eye coordination. Yep. And it's a social activity. So we, we play some games on the Wii. Okay. So we brought it up to the living room so they can do the, you know, the dance thing. Have you ever seen me dance? Uh, yeah. No, have, you don't. Yeah, sorry about that. I've seen you dance. Um, they have the Just Dance where you play along yep. and you learn something. I'm going to learn something, and I'm going to bust it out at some place. Ooh, okay. Um, there are some things you look forward to, and then there's some things you look forward to, and then there's some things you <laughs> don't look forward to. So we'll, we'll, let's get back to technology. Let's get off you dancing, please. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> so check this out. Another important thing. Yes, sir. 
That's going to happen here. Yes, sir. Mess up my pages. What else is important? Smart speakers. Okay, so obviously a smarter that the speaker that's not a smart one is a feature speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. I can learn. That's We're a great idea. Together. I never even thought. I just, you just <laughs> coined something. A feature speaker. So a smart speaker is your Alexa. It's your um, uh, it could be your phone, right? Your Siri device. It could be your Google Home. It's a speaker that you interact with. <clears throat> now, this sounds pretty innocuous, right? Okay. Smart I don't have an Alexa speaker, or a Google Home. so I'm, Some I'm smart speakers now have built-in video screens, right? You know the, no, the Amazon didn't know Show. Didn't know that. What's oh, it called again? Amazon Show? Show, yeah. Okay. So if you go in and say, hey, Alexa, show me that latest clip or whatever. Today, when I do it, it turns on my TV, launches the Fire TV, and then uh, starts playing. But if you have the Amazon Show, we just have the Alexa, it will actually play it on the device. Does it ever tell you, hey, Sanjay, go pick up a book? Why would it do that? That's not in its own <laughs> self-interest. <Mike. laughs> I'm with you. So um, a- anyway, by the way, uh, yes, sir. I won't tell you, but I know people very closely who <laughs> may have names that sound like mine that have actually asked Alexa to read their kids a bedtime story. Ooh, wow. While they were busy. Well, I think that would probably be kind of entertaining for the kids every yeah. now and then just to break the monotony. Yeah. I'm going to give you a break here, pal. All right, cool, cool, cool. Cut up that the is monotony. interesting because of all the sound effects and stuff. But so this, um, uh, the other thing that's going to happen is these smart speakers. They're really going to drive audio listening and it's going to change as well because of smart self-driving cars. They become interfaces. So these smart speakers are very, very interesting because they are the critical front To every company you know today, Netflix, to Google, to Facebook, to Amazon, that is the next wave of how people will communicate with their computers. It's called natural language dialogue. And that speaker looks all cute sitting there, but every tech company that is playing in that speaker, smart speaker space, is basically betting their future existence on that. Because nobody likes to type, right? Most people can talk faster than they can type. And so natural language is much easier in terms of getting stuff done, right? Have you used a natural language device? I use a natural language device quite frequently. If I'm driving, I will use the telephone, the Bluetooth or whatever through my car, and I will answer texts that way. Uh, I will carry on conversations that way. I will straight up jam that way. So, no, I uh, understand that hands-free is the way to be. Yeah, absolutely. And these things are listening all the time. Which is scary. And really, yeah, sounds like a smart speaker, but it's really a way that these companies got artificial intelligence or AI into your home. It sounds like a science fiction movie is what it sounds like. Yeah, it's designed to make your life easier. It's listening, 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 and you say something, and it does it, and it kind of predicts it. Now, the future of that smart speaker uh, space is going to be this. It's not just going to listen to your commands. It's going to remember your old commands. It's going to be able to recognize your voice by spectral pattern recognition. Oh, so it'll know me, for me. It'll know Mike is asking, and he doesn't like anything, any music that was made in the last 25 years because nope. it's garbage. That's right. right. That's right. That's what He likes the classics. <laughs> he knows the original people. Don't, don't give people an impression that I'm not flexible. So. <laughs> the gray hair, don't let the gray hair fool you. So, no, we have a good So, time. that's the speaker device, and that's going to be amazing in terms of the, the technology. So when we come back, we'll talk about some more big trends, and uh, we'll see you then. Can I talk, talk a little bit about sneaker, sneaker, speaker, sneaker? Yeah, okay, I'd love good. to hear about that. Yeah. Later. See you in a minute. Hi, this is Matt Galini with Mentor iPhone Repair. We specialize in fixing iPhones, iPads, and iPods. Most repairs are done in about 15 minutes or less, and we use OEM parts with a lifetime warranty. We also sell pre-owned devices and thousands of accessories, including cases and charge cords. So stop in at our new location at 7745 Mentor Avenue, across the street from Olive Garden. You can call or text us at 440-227-9677, or check us out on Facebook at Mentor iPhone Repair. 
How do you say French toast, bacon or sausage, coffee or tea and juice for only $5 in French? Toast français, bacon ou saucisse, café ou thé et jus pour seulement 5 dollars. But you don't have to speak French to enjoy the Our Lady of Lord Shrine French Toast Breakfast and Mini Craft Fair on Sunday, November 5th and December 3rd. Enjoy a sweet breakfast of French toast, bacon or sausage, coffee or tea and juice for only $5. Call ahead to get your tickets. 216-481-8232. That's 216-481-8232 and... And bon appétit. Welcome back to Tech Talk 2020 with Sanjay Parker. I'm Sanjay Parker, and I'm here with my co-host, Mike Carswell. We are talking about the future of tech and media over the next five years. Got some fascinating information. We're just talking about smart speakers, and Mike is going to chime in with some innovative new new uh, breaking news. No, it was just breaking news today. My wife made a trip to Carrollton, Ohio, and she asked me to pull up uh, a Google Maps so she could see specifically where she was going. She's going to use a GPS, da-da-da. What was very interesting to me is that I did look up Google Maps on one of my phones or my computer, but one of the, the, I have two phones, and one of the devices I didn't use, later in the day, when I went to Google Maps, I must have been logged in somehow, the first past address that was pulled up was for Carrollton, Carrollton Ohio, where I was going earlier, but I wasn't utilizing that phone at the time, so I just felt like that phone was sitting over in another part of the room, mm -hmm. and I could be crazy here, but my assumption is that if you are on one particular network, be it Google or pick another one I'm, I'm assuming that I can think can't think of one for Apple but but if you think of one that is is uh, universal with all your devices it's going to pull it up yeah actually there's a, a big push around um, resumption of sessions so okay if you start a browsing session or search or something on one device if you're logged in on another device when you go back there you can pick it up you know Apple does that with even apps that you use if you go from the iPad right to the iPhone and you have the same apps in the middle of a game, you can pick it up and start playing. It remembers mm -hmm. that state. Okay. So I guess you, when you're on the Internet, you better go to good places or people are going to know where you go. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if you've got nothing to hide, you got nothing to worry Sean, about. Sean, good places. You got that, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> good places, guys. So here's something interesting. They're going to – these smart speakers that are artificial intelligent agents in your home, that's really the future of – Did you call them agents? Yes. <laughs> They're you're going to it. well they do things for us. They're, they're spies. They're service agents. They're spies. They are. That smart speaker adoption is going to grow faster than any other consumer device in history. Meaning, how long did it take? Here, I'm going to ask you a question, Mike. Okay. How long did it take for these devices to take uh, to get to 50 percent penetration in the U.S. in terms of the population? So how, so wait a minute. You're telling me the Google Home and Alexa, those other devices are at a 50 percent penetration rate in the U.S. currently? I don't think so. I'm going to bet against that. Nobody said that. Okay. Nobody How said that. Soon, <laughs> How soon? That's why it pays to lis listen, guys. Oh, uh, okay. Even okay. if you're you know, the big radio show co-host. Yes, I am. Listen. Yes, I am. So, <laughs> so it took the computer 20 years. So computers are a mainstay in people's homes today. 50% or more. Okay, it gotcha. Mm -hmm. The radio, how long to become 50%? Oh, my gosh. I, I want to say it didn't. Boy, it started so long ago. Uh, 20 years. Let's give yeah, it another 20, 20 years. Yeah, 20 years. Sure. Television. Same. About 12. Oh, really? Smartphone, okay, how long did it take to reach Well, percent? smartphone, we were talking less than 10 years. It's yep. been about nine years. Nailed it, right? Seven yeah. years, seven, eight years. Uh -huh. Smart speaker, they're going to say it takes probably about four years. And you we're think. probably in the second or third year. I'm resistant. Yep. So even though people are adopting this. I'm it's, resistant. It's not going to be a sky high. Resist. Podcast, right. Not everybody's going to have one. And by the way, people who have one, there's yes. so much more you can do. 65% uh, of people, they said have not enabled one Alexa skill. A skill is something new, like you can go in and enable it to do something like, hey, look up, um, you can look up NBA scores and do basic things, but sure. what about a skill like uh, a choose your own adventure? What's you know, a menu kind of for uh, you know rigatoni? I think that, mm -hmm. that the issue skills, is, right. is similar to whatever you have, most of us on our computers, we have a Microsoft package, which contains Outlook and PowerPoint and other programs utilized and do, our, do the things we'd like to do. Mm -hmm. But so many of us don't use all the programs. We don't. So we have 
somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, we will use 20 percent of of the of the software's capabilities yep. so in con in con concert with what you just mentioned with the other devices i'm sure that there's going to be a level of it that we really don't utilize that's totally yeah human nature that 80 20 rule 80 percent of the people will use 20 percent of the features of anything has always been around 20 percent you get a gym membership and 80 percent of the people will use it you know less that's crazy than 20%, and they'll, they'll keep paying for it for a year yeah it's crazy absolutely so that's kind of interesting also here's here's some other trends that are happening we talked about virtual reality and augmented reality mm -hmm. on our show so virtual reality is when you put on the big headset you can't see anything except you know the 3d world that you're interacting all over with. tv about a year and a half ago but we don't see much of it at all now kind of interesting yeah mm -hmm. and then there was a push for augmented reality like microsoft hololens where you know you can go ahead and look at an object and see the real object but also something layered on top of it that's mm. kind of neat you know for learning how to do stuff but now it's all over the board there's merged reality there's transmogrified reality I can't touch immersive that. it's crazy immediated reality where there's somebody brokering what's real and what's not it's a little crazy so they're just changing the term to reality computing mm -hmm. and that could mean anything and they think that's going to be pretty big because of a couple of things there's been an adoption um uh, stagnation because you know wearing that bulky headset plus mm -hmm. it's expensive you know right. plus you need um, an expensive computer plus you're tethered to your desk you know and, and even with the the smartphones which is really going to lead the adoption because now since the iPhone 6 plus and the Galaxy S8 they all have built-in hardware capable of right. doing 3d stuff but still it's not safe to walk around you know <laughs> with the you know, trust me I know really of, yeah <laughs> It's not so good. So, you know, walking around and doing that is not a great thing. But we're really going to see tomorrow, you know, the big computing platform is going to be a blend of all of those realities. The idea is that, just picture it this way, the easiest way to explain it is that anywhere you are, that can be a screen. Mm. So that's how, you know, um, reality computing is going to build You're itself. basically validating the fact that we'll be doing less and less reading. No, you can read. It's just that the medium is a little bit. Sean different. agrees with me. <laughs> so we know. <laughs> Look, guys, this is hey, crack a book. It's would fun. You? It's fun. Crack a book. I understand. No more cracking. Long, long as balance is is, is kept in there, well, I'm, a, I'm a happy guy. The, you know, when the book came out, all the people who the printing press and they said, "Oh, I like handwriting. This is garbage. This mass produced stuff." How do you, you know? know? You weren't around. No, I. I, I, I at, they posted it and keep telling me what's going to happen tomorrow. I wonder I what's going to happen tomorrow. Usenet groups. What's okay. going to happen tomorrow? Tell me. So another interesting thing that yeah. we're going to see is mm -hmm. around with all this change. Okay. We know that. Deep breath, everyone. Two things: sports, sports. You know a little bit about sports. Sports been there. Been is there, interesting because it has that moat kind of effect. It's it's just insulated. So right now. The NFL, even though everybody's claiming doom and gloom, Activate thinks that they're still going to lead in terms of U.S. viewers, mm -hmm. under 41 million. They in, better fix in their five thing years. there. <laughs> and you look at NBA, yeah. it's still going to level off around, you know, 63 million. Baseball mm -hmm. has more viewers than NBA. I don't know that. Longer season? Think about it. Double the games. 79 million. Double the games. But then hockey has 32 million. Well, they have a lot of games. Right? I'm going to a hockey game on Saturday. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, Where? Man. Yeah, man. They're here, Cleveland. Oh, that's cool. The, oh, yeah. Is that the... The Lake Erie Monsters. Yeah. Lake yeah. Erie Monsters. I was there when they won the championship. So, yeah. Beautiful moment. Oh, yeah. That was mm -hmm. uh, two years ago. That was yeah. a great year. I was there. Stipe and the Cavs and the Monsters. That was awesome. A lot of wins that year. Yeah. So, I interesting, they break it down. A super fan views 10 or more hours of sports content per week. Are you a super fan? No. I don't think I ever was a super fan. That sounds... Uh, you said per week? Yeah. Oh, 10 per week. Yeah, I was a super fan. I thought you meant 10 per day. No. 10 per <laughs> week, yes. I addiction. used to be... That, that would be sick. Yeah, I used to be a super fan if that's if it's 10 per day. Yeah. And then I was listening to it on the radio as well. Yeah. So. A, a, a last little piece here that I want to talk about in terms of big trends. Again, you can check out this report. It's the Activate Tech and Media Outlook 2018. We'll post a link on our site. It's pretty fascinating stuff, especially if you have a company or you work with companies that leverage digital marketing uh, around media there's all kinds of concepts around super users and and things that they're talking about but it's super interesting sports guy yeah now you heard about fake news i have so it's interesting I'm very familiar with it 
the future of how so do you know where most people get their news here's the breakdown well i you know that's very interesting you say that i think we have a little bit of time to talk about that where do people get their news i ask that question often mm -hmm. and i'm surprised to find out based on their age where they get it from so many folks that are my age seem to get their news from the network uh, from either a television feed or, or whatever and and all, many 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 get it from from the radio which is interesting but younger folks hit twitter um some go to instagram and I don't know how to get news on Instagram, but uh, some of the other applications or Yahoo, they utilize uh, uh, some of the, in the networks for, uh, for you for news on a daily basis. And then there's many kids, that, I'm calling kids, I mean, in their 20s, they don't even care. I mean, I, I know a kid that, that was dressed for, you know, it was going to be a 70 degree day and he was dressed like it was going to be 40 degrees. I'm like, dude, did you? Did you check the weather this morning? Anti news, anti news. <laughs> I, no, I just just think slow. <laughs> just, just, wow, you got to check those. Don't things. get me started on the death of expertise and how nobody <laughs> believes anybody, including the forecasters. I'm which, one of them. I don't yeah, believe anybody. Yeah, you're. Anyway, so <laughs> if you take all U.S. adults, forty percent get their news from social media. Wow, mostly Facebook. Facebook is the top site. I a never of news. read. Well, I mean, let's put like I minimally read news on Facebook. They, most Very of the country minimal. gets it there, and the interesting thing is that because I don't believe it, it's more curated, and it's curated for you. And interestingly, yeah. um, so you look at forty percent social media, thirty-eight percent direct visits to their favorite news sites, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, whatever it is. Right. Thirty-one percent just doing search engine, eleven percent email alerts. So kind of interesting that these big companies um, um, are are really still influ being influenced by social media and, and Facebook. Yeah. I guess we never really thought the power of social media would reach the level that it is. No, and it's the big problem with that, they're saying, is fake friends and f are fake bots. Mm -hmm. So on Facebook, there's a lot of bots, mm -hmm. right? And so when you look at what's happened over the past year or two uh, on these social platforms, these fake bots drive fake news. But why is it dangerous? So that's because they're know. likely to be, well, because it's not accurate, and because they're likely to be the most active distributors of false content. False content inherently yes, is sir. not a good thing, yes, right? Sir. Yeah, so but you don't have to go far to find false content. False content seems to be in our face every day, no matter what device you look at. Absolutely. But social media, like you said, they take it personal, yeah. and people kind of... Right, and there's sewage around my home because we have septic, but I don't want to step through it every day, <laughs> right? I mean, it just <laughs> is there. So it's interesting that we're going to see more and more fake bots, and people are going to run from that and go towards the traditional media sites to have some level of trust. It's going to uh, be interesting. I don't trust... That's their prediction. Anybody. As my 26-year-old said... Don't watch the news. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. But you can stay tuned to Tech Talk 2020. Check out some of our episodes on Facebook. Look at us uh, on YouTube. We're glad to be with you every week here and getting smarter together. Mike Carswell, Sanjay Parker, signing off. Have a great week. Thanks. service offer you'll ever find up to a hundred dollars free on service parts or accessory sales now through december 31st at o'brien